It's only Diamondbacks have won 13 of the last 15, spearheaded by Luis Gonzalez. Meanwhile, the Dodgers have won 13 out of 17, and their big gun is Sean Green. But making possibly the biggest difference of all, there is Kurt Schilling on the mound for the D-backs. Dodger Baseball. Live from Dodger Stadium, Fox Sports Net 2 presents the Dodgers as they take on the Arizona Diamondbacks. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Monday night to you, wherever you may be. The Dodgers figure to have their hands full with Arizona. Arizona coming in here, eight games in front of the Dodgers. And by the way, if you haven't been counting, we can do the math for you, including tonight. The Dodgers have only 32 games left. That's quite a challenge to make up eight in the standings, especially as well as the Diamondbacks have been playing. So realistically, the Dodgers take the field tonight, not so much to cut into Arizona's lead, but to hold on to the lead they have against San Francisco in the wild card. San Francisco, by the way, will begin a four-game series in Colorado. They are three and a half games behind the Dodgers. The pitching for tonight, well, it's Omar Dahl for the Dodgers, but in all honesty, you could do a whole pregame show just on Kurt Schilling, not only a 21-game winner. Do you realize over the last two years, he is 20-1 and one against the National League West. This year, against the National League West, he is 12-0. and 0. And O might very well be spelled O-H. We'll get to the starting lineup. We'll have it all coming up for you right after this. Another lovely evening here in Los Angeles. The temperature 71 degrees at approximately five minutes past seven as the Dodgers and the Arizona Diamondbacks prepare to go head to head. Jim Tracy has reason to smile. His ball club has won 13 out of 17. Although eight games behind Arizona, they are three and a half games in front of the Giants for the moment. The Giants are leading Colorado in Denver two to nothing early in the game. As far as Arizona is concerned, well, this is where it all started. Right after the All-Star break, the Arizona Diamondbacks came to Dodger Stadium in July, beat the Dodgers three out of four, and since that time, they have won 32 and lost only 11. In fact, they come in tonight having won 13 out of 15, and here's the lineup for the division-leading Arizona Diamondbacks. Tony Womack leads off at shortstop, and Quinton McCracken will be in right field. Junior Spivey at second base, and Luis Gonzalez returns to the lineup in left field. Greg Colburn will be at first base. Matt Williams, the veteran third baseman, is in there. Steve Finley is in center. Damian Miller comes back off being banged up to go behind the plate. And Kurt Schilling will be on the mound. Indeed, he will. For Bob Brenly, after winning last year, you wondered if he could do any better this year, and the answer is yes, he can. This ball club of his has really been dazzling, and you realize his pitching staff has allowed four runs or less in the last 19 straight games. The Cardinals did that in 1973, but Oakland made it 21 straight in 1981. The Dodger lineup will have Dave Roberts leading off in center field and Mark East Grissom in left field. Sean Green hitting third in right field. Paul LaDuca moves up to the cleanup spot. Adrian Beltre will be at third base. Eric Karras will be at first. Mark Grassalonic will be at second base, rested yesterday with the sore hamstrings. Alex Cora will be the shortstop. And Omar Dahl will be on the mound. So the crowd filing in to see game one of the three game series between the Dodgers and the division leading Arizona Diamondbacks and we'll be getting it underway right after this. 
The Dodgers, as they do before every ball game, taking their positions with youngsters at their heels. Then they give out the autographs, and then the kids leave, and the grown-ups go back to business. And just watching some of the peanuts run off the field in oversized shirts, that's worth the price right there. So the kids have left the field, and it's time now for the big boys to take over, and big they are. No one could tell you more than Omar Dahl with a record of 10 and 6. Dahl has won three in a row, toss in a few no decisions. The last time he lost a game was the 15th of July. The last time he won a game was August the 15th when he shut down Montreal and won the game one to nothing. Omar Dahl one and one against the Arizona Diamondbacks this year. He faced them way back at the end of May when he was three and six. Meanwhile, the Dodgers might see Kurt Schilling in their nightmare. He has beaten them nine straight times. He has beaten them twice this year, six times without a loss the time before that, and it just goes on and on and on. Schilling is 21 and four, and among others in there trying to turn his record around will be Sean Green. Tony. So Tony Womack, followed by Quinton McCracken and then Junior Spivey. When the Dodgers first saw Womack early in the year, he was really struggling, but he opened up his stance at the plate. And by opening up, pulling his right foot closer to first base, he seems to see the ball a lot better, and he checks in batting 271. Takes a strike. In the words of Bob Brenly, Womack is the key to our engine. He starts everything. That's on the corner, strike two. So Bob Brenly at the helm again and piloting another dynamic Diamondback club. One and two the count to Tony Womack. Three home runs, 45 runs batted in. Womack is hitting less than 200 against left handers. But he stays alive, fouling that off. One and two. The Diamondbacks come in here with the best record in baseball and the hottest team in the National League since the All Star break. Two and two. For Omar Dahl working on Womack head to head, Womack is hitting 200 against him. Two and two. Ball three. So Dow getting a quick no ball two strike count. Now nibbles and goes all the way. Hit in the air to left field. Grissom retreats a little bit to pick it off. One away. And the batter will be Quinton McCracken. Let's take a look at the Dodgers with the leather behind Omar Dahl. And you have Karras and Grasolonic, Cora and Beltre, Grissom making his 17th straight start. And of course, as you probably know, Brian Jordan is now on the DL. Dave Roberts and Sean Green, Paul LaDuca behind the plate. Though Jordan in uniform, they also serve who only sit and wait. And Brian, if nothing else, is with the ball club in spirit right now. Quinton McCracken, who has done a good job, and he's hitting 314 against left handers, and he takes the strike. McCracken overall batting 322, three home runs, 34 runs batted in. And after McCracken comes Junior Spivey, and Spivey has really been swinging a big bat against left handers. He's batting 357 against left hand pitching. No balls, one strike. One and one. We're just starting. Dodgers D backs, first inning, game one of a three game series. That's a little flare going out as Grassalonic, but it's going to drop. So McCracken, a little fly ball single into right center. And that'll bring up Junior Spivey. Second baseman. Junior Spivey. Junior Spivey, a 357 batting average with nine home runs and 25 runs batted in against left handers. 
overall you can see he's been very consistent and he has just worn the Dodgers out. So Junior Spivey one of the great stories of the year virtually coming out of nowhere to become a solid fixture at second base for Arizona. Ball one. Omar Dahl working on Spivey. Quinton McCracken over at first base is four for four. Four steals and caught four. Ball two. Omar Dahl making his 17th start of the season, third against the D backs. He is one and one against them. In his last six starts, He's gone three and all with a very good ERA of two. And now he's asking for some trouble. He's three and all to Spivey and on deck Luis Gonzalez. Gonzalez hitting 270 against left handers and he's been the number one Arizona hitter on the road. In there three and one. You have two very hot ball clubs. The Dodgers have won six straight series. Bob Brenly's club has won five straight series, most recently against Chicago. And there's ball four. So Spivey draws the walk. D backs at first and second, and Luis Gonzalez coming up. Gonzalez with 25 home runs nine of them have been hit against left handers and let's see going against Omar Dahl he's hitting 316 with two home runs so handle with care here. So Lewis checking in two on one out first inning no score. Omar Dahl you remember started off the year through May he was four and oh pitching exceptionally well hard ground ball to Karras he gets one the return throw to Karras double play. So Omar Dahl gets a three six three double play thanks to Eric Karras and at the end of a half an inning no score. Arizona fails to score in the first yeah. inning. Luis Gonzalez bangs into a double play. And now the Dodgers come up against Kurt Schilling. Schilling with a record of 21 and 4. And where do you begin? What hasn't been said about Kurt Schilling? Well, let's start with the fact that with 21 wins, he has more wins than walks. And you have to go back to look up people like Christy Mathewson. Slim Sally and Brett Saberhagen. Saberhagen in a strike year had 14 wins and 13 walks. Matthews in one year had 25 wins, 21 walks, and Schilling is 21 with 20. And the batter will be Dave Roberts. Strike. The other night, his last time out, he made 14 pitches in the strike zone before he even missed once and didn't walk a man until it was the fifth inning. Oh and one to count. And the curveball is whacked to right. McCracken to the track reaches up can't get it and a rabbit is loose. Dave Roberts on his way to third and in there with a belly whopper. So Kurt Schilling hangs a curveball and Dave Roberts really straightened it out. And the Dodgers now with a man at third and nobody out. That curveball was right in Roberts' kitchen, just around the knees as he clears McCracken's glove and hits it off the wall. So Dave Roberts was two for six against Schilling. Now three for seven and what a way to lead off. And Marquise Grissom now will check in. Grissom a Dodger spark plug. And that gets away but Miller took one look in Roberts holding 
One ball and no strikes. Schilling does have a half a dozen wild pitches. Not only a great fastball and a curveball, but a damaging splitter, and that just seemed to completely fool his catcher. So that would figure to be a pass ball had a runner advanced. One ball and no strikes. Hard ground ball. Great stop by Matt Williams to take a run away. That's down the line for a double except for Matty's play. One away. Batting third. You know you realize that Kurt Schilling is human but the National League West doesn't know about it. I mean he is godlike as far as they are concerned. Over the last two years Schilling is 20 and 1 against the West. He is 12 and 0 against the West. He has beaten the Dodgers nine straight times. But he needed a save by Williams. Sean Green fouls it away 0 and 1. Sean Green and Kurt Schilling. Well that's an all star battle. Green is hitting 323 with two home runs against him. Schilling by the way gives up some home runs 19 of them because he doesn't give up very many walks one ball and one strike the infield halfway green batting 283 38 home runs 100 runs batted in Dodgers haven't beaten Kurt Schilling since 1997 ball two. Naturally Schilling is superbly complimented by Randy Johnson. But they still have a ways to go. To beat the best 2 0 as far as winning percentage is concerned. Ball three. As of right now anyway the best winning percentage by two pitchers on the same team. The 1961 New York Yankees Ralph Terry the right hander Whitey Ford the left hander. And they were 41 and 7. That's still ahead of Johnson and Schilling. And there is a rarity indeed. A walk in the first inning. And the Dodgers are hoping maybe this will not be the Kurt Schilling that has beaten them nine straight times. Paul LaDuca, who has been rather outspoken as a player representative, and I think for the first time really in his young career. He's heard a few boos as he comes up to the plate. 285, eight home runs, 52 runs batted in. The so first and third, one out, no score. Roberts led off with a triple, green walk. Line foul, lower deck, 0 and 1. Laduca going head to head with Schilling has one home run and hitting 273 against him. Thanks to a CD ROM and the fact that he spent about $25,000, Kurt Schilling on his computer can pull up every pitch to every hitter he has ever made. One and one. So before a game, he'll go to his computer. And he'll check every pitch he's made to every Dodger hitter down through the years. So they have said, and no doubt it's true, when he takes the mound, he is without a doubt the best and well prepared pitcher in the game. Sean Green, who runs well but doesn't do a lot of running, has stolen seven out of ten. One thing you can do. With Schilling is put on a hit and run play if you wish because you can figure you'll get a fairly good pitch to handle. And that's going to be a fly ball into right center. McCracken with Roberts tagging. McCracken's throw to the plate is a good one, but he's in there. So Laduca picks him up, and the Dodgers lead one to nothing. The Marquis Grissom didn't get a chance thanks to a splendid play by Great Matt Williams. But Paul LaDuca picked him up with the fly ball. 
That for Laduca, by the way, would be only his fourth scoring fly ball, but it came at the right time, and the Dodgers take the one nothing lead. Now Adrian Beltre. He has struggled against Schilling, but he does have one home run against him. One ball and no strikes. Adrian hitting 264, 16 home runs, 58 runs batted in. Fouled away. There are two reasons why the Arizona Dolman Diamondbacks do not go into lengthy losing streaks. And the two reasons are Johnson and Schilling. And especially to Schilling, I mean, he is the stopper that any club would need. He's also extremely successful on the road. Kurt Schilling on the road away from friendly Bob is 11 and 1. He has taken the ball seven times after an Arizona loss, and his record is 6 and 0. Oh. And following an Arizona defeat, 28 starts, he is 23 and 1. Beltre, a fly ball to somewhat shallow center. Finley thought it was a deep ball, and it's going to drop. Steve leaned and started back on what should have been an easy fly ball, but this time of night, the lights have not really taken that much effect. And Steve Finley, one of the better center fielders in the league, was really messed up on that fly ball and shakes his head. Should have been easy, but he started to his right and then just could never catch up to it. So the Dodgers get a big break. After losing an extra base hit on the brilliant play by Matt Williams, I think the light sky bothers Finley. So Eric Karras coming up. Karras has one home run, hitting in the 240s again showing. Ball one. First and third, two out, first inning. Dodgers one, D backs nothing. Green and Beltre at the corners. And that's a pop fly into shallow right. Coming in is McCracken going out as Spivey, and it is McCracken. And that was almost trouble. So the Dodgers wind up with Dave Roberts getting a triple. Paul LaDuca picks him up, and at the end of an inning, Dodgers won, Arizona another. Dodgers lead Arizona and Kurt Schilling one to nothing as we go to the second inning and for the D backs Colburn Williams and Finley in that order. Greg Colburn the number one guy in the club against left hand pitching. Ball one Colburn comes in batting 380 against left handers 309 overall. Five of his seven home runs have been hit against left handers and he goes to the gap and gets it through to the wall. So by the time Roberts gets it back in, Greg Colburn opens up with a bullet in the alley for a double. And the tying run is out there with nobody out. So Greg Colburn now has 31 hits in his 80 at bats against left handers. And trying to pick him up, Messrs. Williams, Finley, and Miller. Matt Williams who made that splendid play to take an extra base hit and an RBI away from Marquise Grissom. And Marquise can only think about one that got away because he really drilled it. That's a strike to Matty. All in one. Last three games, Matt Williams, five for 11 with four RBIs. He knocked in a couple of ribbies yesterday. For two weeks, hitting 340. So he comes in here breathing fire. One and one. Overall, Williams batting 257, five home runs, 17 runs batted in. Way back in February, taking ground balls, he suffered a dislocated left ankle and a broken fibula, and that just about wrecked most of the year. Foul ball, one and two. The surgical procedure that night. Included the attachment of an eight hole plate to the damaged fibula, and they put a large screw to hold the ligament that connects the fibula to the tibia. 
Well, in other words, he went through some terrible times, but he's back. One and two to Matt. Two and two. Williams had a nine game rehab, and now here he is holding down third base against Omar Dahl. Two balls, two strikes. Got him. Late break on that pitch. That's what fooled Williams. It looked like it was going to be a fastball outside the plate, and it suddenly darted in right there. Got the edge, and down goes Williams. So one out, and Steve Finley coming up, and Finley with a chance to atone, although actually the fly ball that he misjudged did not lead to a run. Red hot of late, batting 277. Finley is in the horse business and just loves it. That's right, 0 and 1. Finley, who moved to the San Diego area, lives in Del Mar. He's the owner of some thoroughbreds, and he calls the ownership F8, as if you would score a fly ball to the center field. F8. One and one. He dreams of someday bringing a horse to the Kentucky Derby. He went to school in Kentucky, and he lives down near Rancho Santa Fe, 10 acre ranch horse farm. Finley grew up on a working farm in Tennessee. One and one. Ball two. Two and one to count to Steve Finley. The Omar Dahl trying to harness this one to nothing lead and get it back to the barn, and Finley trying to even up the score. Two and one. Ball three. Three and one. Waiting his turn on deck, Damian Miller. One out, one nothing Dodgers, Colburn at second base. Three and one to count to Steve Finley. And that's going to be hit at Grassalonic, but no further play. So Finley hits it right at Grassalonic, two down. Don't forget the Dodgers in Arizona tomorrow night at 7:10, and all fans 14 and under in attendance receive a free Dodger bubble watch. Compliments of Amtrak. Damian Miller back in the harness of things, the workhorse catcher who had been on the disabled list and came off on the 15th, and they will walk him intentionally. And take their chances with Kurt Schilling, who, by the way, has 14 hits to tie a career high. So he's not too handy with the bat, but just enough where he could hurt you. So, in a moment, two on, two out, and Schilling will be coming up. Pitcher number 38. So two on, two out, second inning. Dodgers leading one to nothing. And here is Schilling. Schilling has three runs batted in. Strikes out maybe 25% of the time, so that makes him dangerous. One ball, no strikes. And for a pitcher hitting better than 200, he's doing very well. And he hits a fly ball in the gap in left center, but it is high enough for Roberts to pick it off. So Schilling and out to left center, no run to hit, two left at the end of an inning and a half, one nothing Dodge. A reminder you can still purchase season ticket packages in the dugout club. The amenities include access to a private club, preferred parking, buffet catered by Wolfgang Puck Chefs, 
in seat waiter waitress service complimentary food and much more for more information 323 224 1320. Omar Dow gets out of a scrape and the Dodgers lead one nothing bottom of the second inning. And that's going to be banged by the diving Spidey and it's a base hit for Mark Grassolani. So the Dodgers with three hits and a run and robbed of another and leading Schilling one to nothing. For Mark Grassolanik a milestone in his career. He's not about to ask for the ball. Twelve hundred hits are a lot but uh, he's kind of a blue collar player. He, he's not much for ceremony. And the batter now is Alex Cora. Right. Oh and one. Alex Cora two for twelve again Schilling but playing exceptionally well now good enough to start 24 straight and 18 of the 24 starting at shortstop over Cesar is tourists in the dirt nice save by Damian Miller. Schilling trying to win his 22nd and that in itself is quite a story. It fouled and that'll carry out of play and the count one and two. For Kurt Schilling he reached his 21st win in Arizona's 126th game. That's the fastest since Bob Welch the former Dodger. 121 in 124 games for Oakland way back in 1990. And that's bang to center, base hit. Of course, it's the old story. Base hits are not a payoff window, but the Dodgers now have four hits in one inning plus against Richard, Schilling. And the battle will Omar be Omar Dahl. Omar Dahl has sacrificed a half a dozen times. You would think he would be bunting, would you see? So two on, nobody out. Greg Colburn on the grass. Matt Williams has to play about even with the bag. And the punt is down, and it's a good one. Schilling has to go back to first, and the runners move up 90. So Cora's at second, Grassolonics at third. Dahl puts down his seventh sacrifice, and it was a beauty. Williams could not come in. Damian Miller directing Schilling to go to first. So the batter now will be Dave Roberts. By the way, the Giants are leading the Rockies three to one. Todd Helton just hit a home run to get Colorado on the board. Todd Helton was hitting 409 in the month of August over the last three years. So this is his time and it's no surprise that he hit a home run. So here is Roberts. Right. Rasolonic at third, Cora at second. Roberts tripled, got a curveball, and hit it over Quinton McCracken's head. One run, four hits for the Dodgers, no runs, two hits for the D backs. Fouled away. So Roberts in a hole now, 0 oh 2. Kurt Schilling has 259 strikeouts, only 20 walks. In his last six starts, 54 strikeouts and two walks. 
slap foul off third. No play for Williams. Still 0 2. If you joined us a little late, Dave Roberts got a curveball just around the knees and he hit it over the head of Quinton McCracken for a triple. Marquise Grissom hit a shot and was robbed by Matty Williams, and LaDuca hit a fly ball to right field deep enough to score Roberts. So it is one to nothing, Dodgers. 0 oh 2 to Dave. And it looked like a splitter that time, and down he goes. That is the first strikeout for Kurt Schilling, and you figure he would go to the split. That bottom dropping out of that thing. When you realize that his fastball is clocked around 93 and 94 most of the time, he can rear back and hit 96 or 97 in big moments, and then that great splitter, toss in a pretty good slider. You understand why he is where he is. Fastball. 0 oh and 1 to Grissom. And he hit 94 with a fastball. Second and third, two out. Marquise Grissom has certainly been the good luck charm for the Dodgers, mostly because of his outstanding play. 1 and 1. So Grasolonic at third, Cora at second, two out, one and one to Marquise Grissom. And a ground foul outside of third. When you talk about Arizona, you talk about Kurt Schilling and Randy Johnson, of course, and their names are certainly hooked up together. And when they play the Dodgers, you immediately think of Don Drysdale and Sandy Koufax. But you know, only in 1965 did Don Drysdale and Sandy Koufax win 20 or more together. Koufax that year was 26 and 8, and Drysdale was 23 and 12, never in back to back season. Two and two. Schilling and Johnson. Just keep rolling along. They have had four 20 or more win seasons in the last two. Very much on the beam, and now a meeting with Damian Miller. And if you really get the numbers out, Randy Johnson's numbers match up very closely to those of Sandy Koufax. But Kurt Schilling on the way to move Drysdale out of the way. So really over the last two years the best power pitching and winning pitcher combination in the history of modern baseball would have to be Randy Johnson and Kurt Schilling. Little foul ball. Another case in point in the last two years Johnson and Schilling have over twelve hundred strikeouts together. The best back to back two years Koufax and Drysdale had. They had 1,086 strikeouts, about 120 less, in 300 more innings. That's the shocker. Two and two. Got him. So Schilling gives up the hits, but not the runs. The Dodgers look good, but leave runners at second and third. One nothing Dodgers. Dodger baseball is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, bringing people together with low fares. By your local Lexus dealer, a new world of luxury. And by SBC, infinite character, SBC. Dodger Stadium on a glorious evening, one to nothing Dodgers, and they are here, including several bonus babies, thank goodness. That's a strike to the leadoff man, Tony Womack. Bob Brenly constantly preaches to his ball club not to get relaxed, not to take anything for granted. Brenly was saying that just a couple of series that you let get away can turn everything around. And all he has to do is look at what happened to the Dodgers in Arizona. 
You know, on the 11th of July, it's uh, a month and a half ago, the Dodgers were leading Arizona by two and a half games. Today, the Dodgers in second place, trailing Arizona by eight. So in a little more than about six weeks, that's a ten and a half game swing. Right, bitter number six. Quentin McCracken. One out and Quentin McCracken coming up. McCracken single to center in the first inning. You know, one other note about Arizona starting tomorrow night, you'll see Miguel Batista and then Rick Helling on Wednesday night. And of course, the Arizona rotation has been somewhat criticized over the statement once you get by Johnson and Schilling, you don't have very much. But during the streak, remember, Arizona has not allowed more than four runs or less in each of the last 19 games during that streak Anderson Batista and Helling have an ERA of two and a half and we'll see Batista and Helling tomorrow night so they are in a lot of good players rich deep bench and flying high with 83 wins. Ball two, two and one. Arizona is also tough against left handers. 23 and 14 as Schilling and Damian Miller put their heads together. When Steve Spurrier had that Atlantic Conference Championship team at Duke. Quinton McCracken was a defensive back on that ball club. Back in 1989, he's quite an athlete. Fouled away. Still two and two to Quinton McCracken. Dodgers, of course, very conscious of what the Giants are doing. We told you it was three to one in the sixth inning in favor of the Giants. Two and two. Fly ball to center. Dave Roberts is there. Two down. Second base to the 37. So now Junior, Junior Spivey, who Spivey. walked in the first inning, coming up. Dodgers one, D backs nothing. We're in the top of the third with two out. Let's check the pitching in that giant Colorado game. Kirk Reeder and Aaron Cook. Now Kirk Reeder has been doing very well. Reeder four and one in his last six starts, and that's popped up. And that'll do it for the D-backs in the third inning. One, two, three. The Omar Dow sets him down, and at the end of two and a half, one nothing Dodge. Dodgers leading one nothing bottom of the third inning Sean Green Paul LaDuca and Adrian Beltre against Kurt Schilling. Strike big slow curveball. Green walked in the first inning and usually that's when you're going to get that slow curve very early in the count. By the way we mentioned Kirk Reeder and Aaron Cook. Pitching for Colorado. Aaron Cook making his first major league start, but they lifted him in the seventh inning with the Giants leading 3 1. Cook was Colorado's second round draft pick in 1997. And you always hear about a batter coming up and in his first major league at bat hitting a home run. Aaron Cook gave up a home run to the first major league batter he faced. One away. Just a reminder, stay tuned after the game for highlights of all of today's sports action. We'll present the Southern California Sports Report, the Dodger Post Game Report, and a lot more. The Southern California Sports Report, that'll be coming up after the game.
Paul LaDuca had a fly ball to right field. Watch Kurt Schilling on that comeback into the mound. He does everything pretty well. Yep, I got it. And makes his play. Ball one to Paul LaDuca. Schilling is a big man. He's 6'4, 231. One ball, no strikes. That's a strike. One and one. Just off the plate. Two and one to count. The plate umpire tonight is Terry Kraft. He's an interesting man. He spent seven years on active duty in the U.S. Army, and he began umpiring games in the military, and that led to a career, and eventually to the major leagues. Fouled away. And certainly a couple of the great moments for Terry Kraft. He umpired Dave Stewart's no-hitter against the Toronto Blue Jays, and Jim Abbott's no-hitter against Cleveland. Lives in Bradenton, Florida. Terry Kraft. Out on the lines, Miller, Culbreth, and Horn. Two and two to LaDuca. One nothing Dodgers, bottom of the third. Just missed inside. Three and two. Ball to Matt Williams. Two now. The Schilling now, thanks to the sacrifice, has retired five in a row, Beltre. and the batter will be Adrian Beltre. Beltre hit a fly ball to center, but the sky was high and light. Steve Finley went the wrong way on it, tried to correct and come in, but it dropped for a base hit. The old baseball expression, it will look like a line drive in the box score. Now back. Beltre with Karras hitting back of him. Dodgers had a triple walk, single, and scoring fly ball and had to settle for one in the first inning. They had back to back singles opening up the second inning and left them. And that's a foul ball out of play. Still 0 2. So the Dodgers in two innings have left four. Meanwhile, the Diamondbacks have left three. Owen 2. 1 and 2. If he joined us late, Dave Roberts tripled. Laduca's fly ball got him home, and that's it. And down he goes. So that's the third strikeout for Kurt Schilling, who appears to be back on the beam, and at the end of three, one nothing got. Well, we have our Aflac trivia question. Kurt Schilling has 21 wins. Randy Johnson has 19. Who are the last two Dodgers with 20 or more victories in the same season? Schilling, of course, trying to win his 22nd tonight, down 1 0. Luis Gonzalez, followed by Greg Colburn, and then Matt Williams. Gonzo missed seven games, strained muscles in the rib cage, hit the ball sharply into a double play in the first inning. One ball and no strikes to the popular Gonzo. Last year he had a hundred extra base hits in a season. Only 12 players have ever done that. Two and all the count. That's a strike, two and one. Omar Dahl been pitching very well in his last six starts with an ERA of two. 
And pitching his heart out right now to lead Kurt Schilling 1 0. Two and two. Dahl trying to win his 11th and 4th in a row. Right, got it. So Omar Dahl comes up with his second strikeout as he takes care of Luis Gonzalez. Breaking ball that just ran across the plate. And the batter now, Greg Colburn, who's the number one hitter against right hand pitching for Arizona came in hitting 380 against left handers and promptly doubled in the second inning. A graduate of Fontana High School. All conference and football as well. Ball one. They have some wonderful players on the bench. Another reason for the Diamondback success shattered bat and the ball caught by Beltray. So Greg Colburn has his bat shattered and a nice one hand catch by Adrian Beltray for the second out. He thought he really ripped it and the bat just came apart. And Beltray not distracted by the bat stayed with the ball. That's tough to do. So a nice play by Adrian Beltre, and now here's Matt Williams. One ball and no strikes. In the 90s, especially when he was healthy, he hit over 300 home runs, 367 in his career, and his biggest year again when he was healthy, he hit 43 with the Giants. This is an older ball club. No knock on that. It is a club that is now experienced as well as being older in the sense having gone the distance last year. Matt Williams for instance will be 37 the end of November. Luis Gonzalez will be 35 in a little more than a week. Steve Finley. He's 37. Three and one to count to Matt Williams. Here's Gonzo. So they all have some years on them. And then they are backed up by some fine young players like Junior Spivey, Rebeal Durazo, David DeLucci, Chad Moeller. That's ball four. So it is a very well put together club. It is a world championship club. And a guy like Tony Womack really moved all over the place to accommodate Jay Bell. And then finally, Bell on the DL, Womack just took over at second base. And we neglected to mention an old pal of ours, Craig Council, who unfortunately has two bulging discs in his neck. And I believe today he underwent his third epidural injection. And whether council will be able to come back this year or not remains to be seen. He has numbness in the in the hands and fingers. Heard his neck diving at a ball. And they will miss him for sure if he's unable to join the club. A chopper to the hole, but Grassalonic hangs out there, and that's that. So Finley grounds out. Dahl sets him down with a walk. And at the end of three and a half innings, he walks off, leading one nothing. Well, here's the answer to the Aflac trivia question concerning Schilling and Johnson. Who were the last two Dodgers with 20 plus wins in the same season? And you were right on the money if you said Claude Osteen and Bill Singer. And how many of you said Colfax and Drysdale? Well, Osteen and Singer back in 1969. Sandy and Don, 1965. Ball one, Derek Carroll. Meanwhile, in Colorado, the Giants are leading Colorado three to one in the seventh inning. Tim Worrell is pitching in relief of Kirk Reeder. Ball two. Colorado started the rookie Aaron Cook. He failed to hang around too long. And the Rockies are the only team in the major leagues without a complete game from their pitching staff. 
The Giants, meanwhile, playing pretty well of late. They've won five of the last seven, and they're three and a half back of the Dodgers. Three and zero, oh Eric. He flied to right field to end the first inning. Three and zero. Oh. In there. Three balls, one strike. And he's aboard. So Schilling, who does not walk people, has walked two tonight with 21 wins. He now has walked 22, and of course that changes the script. Remember we told you he was one of the rare guys who had more victories and then walks. The most walks in a game this year, he walked three against Colorado. But he's had so many games where he didn't walk any. We'll try and add him up for you just to make the point. Mark Grasolonic at the plate. Going foul down the line. He's had 14 starts this year where he did not walk anybody. And he hit a stretch of five consecutive starts without allowing a walk at all. So to walk two tonight, that's news. Foul ball the other way. 0 and 2. Grasolonic single to center in the second inning. This is the 14th meeting of the year between the two clubs. Not very much to separate them except in the standings. Dave Robertson company has won six. Arizona has won seven. Oh and two. And a fly ball to center. Grasolonic lunging to that so he couldn't get much behind the swing. One out and Alex Cora coming up. Short stop. Number 13. You know we're talking about there's not much except the big difference in the standings between these two clubs. Last year same thing. Jim Tracy against the world champion Arizona Diamondbacks. The Dodgers won nine and Bob Brenly won ten. So one game separated them last year one game separates them this year but not in the standings. A strike. Alex Cora with Omar Dahl on deck. One nothing Dodgers. Dave Roberts tripled and Paul Laduca's fly ball picked him up, and that's it. Cora just having a wonderful year. And drives it to right and deep. Back goes McCracken to the wall. Gone. Schilling downtown. And the Dodgers take a three to nothing lead against the Arizona Ace. The Cora line drive home run into the right field stands, his third home run of the year. For Cora, that would be his first home run against Kurt Schilling. And for Kurt, that would be the 20th home run that he's allowed. Fouled away. The leader on the club as we take another look. Fastball right down the middle, and Cora just rolled his wrists and jerked it out. McCracken running out of room, well back into the stand. Little number wide of third. Williams is on it. Two down. Again, although it looks good as the Dodgers try to cut the Arizona lead to seven, realistically it's more important for them to win and stay three and a half in front of the Giants.
So Omar Dahl has not quite made it back to the dugout, so Dave Roberts is going to take plenty of time getting up to home plate. When you look at the Arizona staff, Rick Helling has given up 25 home runs. Randy Johnson has given up 23. Ryan Anderson has given up 21. And now Schilling has given up his 20th. Ball one. It is no news for Schilling to give up a home run. But I think it's kind of news where he walks somebody and gives up a home run. One foul. One and one to Dave. Roberts struck out on a mean splitter in the second inning after hitting the triple in the first inning. And Alex Cora, who is a tribute to hard work, you really admire whatever he does because he could have quit, he could have sulked when his tourist took over his job, and he did anything but. He just kept working harder and harder. His tourist, meanwhile, just a youngster, he has plenty of time to wait. And for Cora, all the hard work paid off. Two and one. Ball three. Three and one. Roberts, of course, should he get aboard, puts more pressure on the pitcher. He has 37 stolen bases. Marquise Grissom waiting his turn on deck. And Roberts now has a chance to put the heat on. And it also means that Kurt Schilling has walked three. And boy, that is news. How many times has he walked three in a game this year? The answer is once. And against Colorado, he walked three, but only allowed one earned run. So with two walks in six previous starts, now this is the only time you could think of Kurt Schilling as being wild. Chuck Niffin, the pitching coach, not very much Niffin can say. I think most baseball people will tell you Kurt Schilling is the most fundamentally sound pitcher in the game today. Oh, it is three to nothing Dodgers bottom of the fourth and with Roberts aboard let's see about the the battle within the war between Schilling and Roberts and Grissom fouling it away. One thing about Schilling he doesn't give up too many stolen bases because he's pretty quick in coming to the plate. You saw him make a good play early on Sean Green. So he's also a pretty good defensive player out there. And he will watch Dave Roberts. He's very quick. Oh, and one. Roberts a definite threat to go, and Schilling knows it. This is one of those things where you're almost playing with house money. You turn Roberts loose. If you get him for the third out, okay, you'll start off the next inning with Marquise Grissom and then Sean Green. So if he has the slightest opening, you'd expect him to go. And so does Schilling. Roberts with 37 stolen bases. He's been caught nine times. He's seen a couple of very good shilling moves. Not going. And I think Dave was confused on that pitch. Yeah, he's shaking his head. Watch him over there. He's not quite sure he's what he's doing. Uh, where do I go? He was going back to the bag, and Schilling hadn't even started to pick a direction, first or home. He was definitely intimidated. On to. There he goes. And it's swung on and missed at the plate. So it doesn't count at second base. 
the crowd forgot that Grissom is struck out. So it figured that Roberts would go. It didn't figure that Grissom would strike out. But the Dodgers get two and lead three nothing. Remember Arizona here the next two nights. If you can't make it, we'll be right here on Fox Sports Net 2. Dodgers then leave on Thursday for Houston for the weekend. 5.05 on Friday, 5.05 Saturday, 11.35 Sunday morning. And of course, every game on radio with Ross Porter and Rick Monday and Jaime Harin and Pepe Inigues. Curveball hit down to shortstop. Alex Cora will take care of Damian Miller. One away. So Omar Dahl has allowed two hits, a one out single in the first inning to Quinton McCracken, and a leadoff double to Greg Colburn in the second. And that's it. And here is Schilling, who flied to center in the second inning. Dodgers three, D backs nothing, top of the fifth. The Giants are leading Colorado three to one, top of the eighth. Among other things they were looking forward to in Colorado, the fact that Barry Bonds and Larry Walker were tied in the batting race at 357. Bonds is playing, but Walker is not. Bonds had been out of Saturday's game with assorted injuries, and Walker has had a dislocated rib. And that'll do it for Schilling. Three strikeouts for Omar Dahl. And with two down, Tony Womack coming up. Womack flied to left, grounded out, 0 for 2. Dodgers look bunt with Womack. Kara shortens up, and now so does Beltre. Giants made out in the eighth. So Colorado coming up in the bottom of the eighth inning. Giants leading three to one. Three and a half games separating the Giants and Dodgers. And don't forget, the Dodgers still have seven games left with the Giants. Three in San Francisco on September 9, 10, and 11. And four with San Francisco here on the 16th, 17th, 18th, and 19th. And I hear you. I hope. Curveball and a bat splinter. Mm. So Dahl has broken a couple of bats. Shattered Colburn's bat. And now Womack. Two and two. Dodgers three runs five hits a two run home run by Alex Cora and a triple by Dave Roberts little number to third Beltre in a hurry shoots him down boy does he make that play. Wow. Beltre off balance feels it with the glove instead of bare hand and still on one leg gets plenty on the throw to first. What do you think? Is he enjoying the ball game or the ice cream more? Well, his favorite, he's wearing a Sean Green shirt, although it might wind up speckled with chocolate. And his man is at the plate right now. Sean Green. Green, LaDuca, and Beltre in that order. Sean walked in the first inning and hit a hard comebacker that was speared by Schilling in the third, who then threw him out. 0 oh and 2 to Sean Green. We mentioned earlier because it is a star studded battle. Kurt Schilling and Sean Green. Green has two home runs and was hitting 320 against him. Schilling tonight has walked three for only the second time this year.
One and two to Sean Green. Just did hold up on a splitter in the count two and two. The last we heard, the Giant game, it was the bottom of the eighth inning, and the Giants were leading three to one. And that's where it is right now. Felix Rodriguez is pitching in the eighth inning for San Francisco. Big off speed pitch. It reminds us as if he was swinging at a bubble. Don't forget the bubble watch tomorrow night. For kids 14 and under. Here comes that soap bubble and it's gone. So one away. Tomorrow night, Miguel Batista and Hideo Nomo. Wednesday night, the concluding game of the series in the homestand, Rick Helling and Odalis Perez. So here's Laduca. And he hits a fastball to the gap. However, Finley is right there. Two down. Good base number 29. Adrian, Adrian Beltre singled and struck out. Beltre one for two. Made that nice defensive play to get the speedy Tony Womack. Right. Beltre's been on fire last 26 games. That's almost a month. He's hit 362 with five home runs and 20 RBIs. One and one. That was a splitter and it was clocked at 85. So he can give you fastballs 94 run it up to 96 or 7. And he throws that splitter anywhere from 85 to 90. One and one. That's his fight. One and two. To repeat, Giants three, Rockies one. Bottom of the eighth inning, nobody out. Two and two, the count. No swing. By the way, the Rockies lead that series with the Giants seven games to six. Just like Arizona leads the Dodgers seven games to six. Got him. Inside corner. Two strikeouts in the inning. However, as Schilling walks off, it's the Dodgers who walk out leading three nothing. If you looked it up in a baseball chronology, the Dodgers played a doubleheader with Cincinnati on this day in 1939. No big deal. Dodgers lost the first game 5-1. to one. No big deal. However, that first game was televised by an NBC experimental television station. Red Barber hosted that first game. And look where we have come. From a two-camera telecast to 1939, they tell me that doing a World Series game, they could use as many as... 30 cameras. We have come a long way indeed as we move on to take in the sixth inning. It is three to nothing Dodgers and we get a report. Jay Payton who has been absolutely unconscious in Colorado since he moved over from the New York Mets has just hit a two run home run against Felix Rodriguez and the Giants have tied up Colorado. It is 3-3 for Peyton in his last nine games prior to tonight. He was hitting 439. He just hit his sixth home run since coming over to the Rockies and that gives him at least 18 RBIs in the last nine games. So Jay Peyton has certainly found a home and he's tied up the game for the Rockies. Now Bunt 0-2 to Quinton McCracken. Let's get Kraken McCracken. Single to center, fly to center. Arizona lost a very good player, nothing against McCracken, but Danny Bautista was hitting 325. He had six home runs and 23 runs batted in when he went down and lost for the season. 
And McCracken has just come up and done very, very well in right field. Rasolonic to carry. One away. Junior Spivey is another fella who came out of nowhere and a tribute and the rise of Arizona as he checks in against Omar Dahl. Dahl made only nine pitches in the last inning. Spivey has walked and popped up 0 for 1. Started his swing, held up. One ball and no strikes. Dodgers are very well aware of Junior Spivey. He has just worn them out. Junior went to Mexico and begged for a job after the 2000 season. His five year minor leaguer had reached a full count as far as his career was concerned. Two years in a row, he played only a total of 78 games. He was all banged up, and he figured he had to make a decision. So he went to Mexico, literally begged for a job, got it, did pretty well, and eventually got his body back in shape and his career. And here he is, dazzling people in the big leagues. Two and two to Junior. Came into the game inning 318 out of Oklahoma City. His name is Ernest Lee Jr. Spivey. Hits one over the head of Beltre Foul. His first trip to Turner Field in Atlanta, the public address announcer down there got a little confused. And as he came up to hit, he said, now batting for Arizona, Junior Spivey Jr. Well, not quite. Cued off the end of the bat. Another tough play for Beltre, but he makes that play just perfect. And a pretty good toe dance at the other end of that off balance throw by Eric Garrett. Two down. It's amazing how much he gets on it. After all, he has to throw it with one leg in the air, kind of flips it with his wrist, and I mean, gets a lot on it. The only thing was, it almost sailed, but Karras stayed with it. Boy, he does that effortlessly. Two down. The so Luis Gonzalez coming up. Gonzo hit into a double play, struck out, ball one. Always a threat to hit one, however. Foul ball. One and one to count. Gonzalo, the father of triplets, so he has a lot of reasons to play well. And then remember, he hit that little blooper about 100 feet. One of the top hits in the history of the Arizona Diamondbacks to beat the Yankees. Two and one to count. Gonzo last year finished third behind Barry Bond for the MVP award. Two and two. He missed seven games because of irritated cartilage in his rib cage. He returned to the lineup last Thursday. I don't believe he'll ever run off another streak of 446 consecutive games, especially at his age. He's 35. And Bob Brenly is insisting that he makes players sit down just to rest. Little foul out of play. And Gonzalez was the first to agree with Brenly. Yeah, there's no reason to just play a streak. I could use a few days off. Three and two the count. And a foul ball way down the line, carrying just below the stadium club. Here's the winner. And a little fly ball could be trouble. Cora can't get it, neither can Roberts, and Grissom picks it up. So with two out, a bloop single 
to shallow left center. Maybe not a bloop single in the World Series against Mariano Rivera, but he'll take it. That is only the third hit for the D backs. Greg Colburn doubled and lined out. And he has worn Dahl out in the past, so he's the last guy he wants to see right now. One ball and no strikes. Gregory Joseph Greg Colburn lives in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. And drives it to left field. Back goes Grissom. Away back. It is gone. The bloop single followed by the home run. And Arizona very much back in the game. Dodgers three. D backs two. And for Dahl, the 17th home run that he is allowed. The Greg Colburn, who's the number one D back hitter against left handers. It's his eighth home run of the year, 22 RBIs. And the D backs now very much back into contention. So the Giants let a 3 1 lead get away on the home run by Peyton. They're tied 3 3. Now the D backs get close, and the Dodger lead is cut to 3 to 2. One ball and no strikes to Matt Williams. Ball two. So a little pop fly single. Catchable would have been the third out, but it was in no man's land. And then Colburn hits it in the bleacher. Ball three. By the way, Omar Dahl is due to bat fourth when the Dodgers hit in the bottom of the sixth inning. Three and all the count. And that's ball four. So Dahl now with two out gives up the pop fly single, then the home so run, followed the by the walk. Steve Finley. And he has to pull himself together rapidly because Schilling is very much back in the hunt. Steve Finley lined out to Grasselonic and grounded to Grasselonic. Mark plays him about three feet out on the grass. On one. Finley hitting in the 260s against left hand pitching. So the tying run is aboard in Williams, but Matt Williams does not run very well, especially with his history of bad feet and ankles. Well, one and one. With two out. Finley takes a look down to third to Eddie Rodriguez. Matt Williams, along with Coach Robin Young, take a look to see if there might be a play on. And that's going to be hit down the line. Foul. Right down in there. One and two the count, so Matt Williams goes back to first. Finley with Damian Miller on deck. Omar now working his way close to the hundred pitch mark. Two and two. Most pitches in an inning for Omar tonight. He made 18 pitches in the second inning, but he's not really had to labor. Two and two. There goes Williams. A throw to Karras, and Karras throws it high, and Matt Williams gets a stolen base. Oh, what a gift that was! 
I mean Matt Williams does not scare you running at all and Eric had plenty of time to nail him and just had the ball sail. Wow. So Omar Dahl has to talk to himself and Jim Colburn said I'm not going to let you talk to yourself. You might get yourself angry and I'm not going to let you make an angry pitch. Then the game is tied up. So he was just sailing along. He had retired five in a row. He had only allowed a couple of hits. And then a, a bloop single. Then a home run with two out. Then the walk. And now Matt Williams credited with a stolen base. And you can bet Colburn is saying now don't lose your head about this. Two and two the count. The uh, two balls, two strikes, two out. Dodgers lead 3 2, but Finley with a chance to pick up Williams and even it up. Eric Harris would love to have that throwback, but it just sailed on him. Two and two. And it's a line drive base hit. Now let's see. Grissom coming up, gives it everything he's got. What a throw! Got him! Grissom keeps the Dodgers out in front three to two and now in the bottom of the sixth inning Eric Karras will start it off against Kurt Schilling. Right. Karras flied to right and walk he was aboard when Alex Cora hit the home run. One ball one strike. Well, Mark East Grissom, a marvelous throw to nail Matt Williams on the fly to Paul LaDuca, and the Dodgers still lead, barely. Oh, by the way, we told you that Colorado had tied up the Giants 3 3. There's a base hit to center. In the top of the ninth inning, David Bell led off for the Giants with a home run. So the Giants are back out in front Second now, 4 to 3 in the ninth. Here's the protection play of the night for the week, the month, and maybe the year. What a throw by Mark East Grissom. And hung out to dry is Matt Williams. No contest there. Nowhere to go, nowhere to hide. The great electrifying throw. And now here's Grassolani. Foul ball. Meanwhile, Paul Aduka talking to Marquise Grissom about the throw. Take another look at it. This thing just carried all the way on the fly. And a tag up on the right arm long before the foot could have come across the plate. One ball, one strike. So Mark East Grissom is more than just a good luck charm. With Grissom in the starting lineup, the Dodgers are 39 and 18. Without him, they're under 500. And that's a drive to left. Gonzalez over to get it. And back to first goes Karras. Kurt Schilling is due to bat second Short when Arizona comes up in the seventh inning. Whether he comes up or not remains to be seen. Alex Cora singled and homered against him tonight, so Alex is two for two. Once upon a time, he was in the Dodger organization, a left hander by the name of Eddie Oropesa, and he's throwing in the Arizona bullpen. You know, seeing Cora hit that home run tonight, 
He has given up a few home runs has Randy Johnson. Rookie Austin Kearns hit a home run off Randy Johnson for Cincinnati and he wanted to ask Johnson to sign the ball but he was afraid he'd afraid that Johnson would get ticked off. That's a whacked into right center base hit. Finley cuts it off. Harris going to third. Cora is three for three at first base. And the batter will be Omar Dahl. So we have a chance to just finish up that story about Austin Kearns hitting a home run. And he wanted Randy Johnson to autograph the ball because the fan threw the ball back. But uh, Austin Kearns was scared to death. And when Kurt Schilling was pitching a week earlier, Brandon Larson hit a home run off Johnson in his first at bat. He got the ball back. And Larson decided he would ask Johnson for an autograph. And his next at bat, Johnson threw a nasty slider and it broke Larson's big toe. Larson did ask Johnson for an autograph. And Johnson said yes he would sign a ball but not the home run ball. When uh, Kearns hit the home run of Johnson in the next game Schilling had a 97 mile an hour fastball to make Kearns hit the dirt. Well Schilling facing Cora and Alex touched him up for a third hit. Schilling talking, Renly listening. And Schilling has won the moment. Dave Hansen is going to come up and bat for Omar Dahl. So Hansen against Schilling is 8 for 22 with two home runs. So Dahl goes out leading, and Hansen tried to make sure he gets a win. One out. Rob Nen is now pitching the bottom of the ninth in Colorado and the Giants are leading four to three. And there's one out in the ninth inning in Colorado. Little dribbler foul and the count on one. Well Hansen comes up and the first pitch he gets pretty good splitter. First and third, one out. For Alex Cora, this is a big night. He's had two singles and a home run. Second time this year he's had a three hit game. Karras down the line from third, one out. That's a strike. 0 oh and 2. And that was another splitter, and that one on the outside corner dropped at the knees as it was coming to the plate. That was really a mean pitch. 0 oh and 2. Remember, Schilling has beaten the Dodgers nine straight times. They haven't beaten him since 1997. Ball one. After two splitters, he just showed him a fastball high and away at 93. So Omar Dahl. Trying to win his 11th, trying to beat Schilling in the D backs, trying to win his fourth in a row. It took a great throw by Grissom to keep him out in front. Fouled away. Schilling, meaning business, two splitters, then a showcase fastball, and then he came after him with a 94 mile an hour fastball, and Hansen just did get a little of it going by. Big out. There's only one down, so he wants Hanson badly. And he got him. The bat going way down in foul ground. Meanwhile, as everyone was distracted by the bat, Alex Cora promptly stole second. Center fielder, number 30, Dave Roberts. So Schilling takes care of Hanson. Big out and Dave Roberts the batter. For Kurt Schilling, he now has seven strikeouts. 
There goes the bat. And there went Cora. So second and third. You're sitting in the bench. You're called up to face a guy like Schilling. What a task. Mean splitters, 94 mile an hour fastball, and down you go. So here is Roberts, tripled, struck out, and walked. They pull up the corners in case he's thinking about bunting. That's right. Three runs, seven hits for the Dodgers, two runs, five hits for the D backs, and with two out in the ninth inning in Colorado. One and one. That was a low hard one. You always hear about the high hard one. That was a low hard one. 95 mile an hour fastball below the knees. One and one. This is when Schilling reaches back. Right around now. Just off the plate. That was 94. Two and one. Dodgers left four men in the first two innings. Now they have second and third, but two out in the six, and it's all over in Colorado. The Giants win it. Four to three on a ninth inning home run by David Bell. Ground ball to short, and that'll be that. So you can see why Schilling is a 20 game winner, why he is ranked so high, he will not give in. Dahl goes out and the Dodgers lead 3 2. Dodger baseball is brought to you by the Mercedes Benz dealers of Southern California, by Pure MGD, and by Penn's Oil. We're driving protection. A beautiful night and a beautiful ball game, and the crowd enjoying every minute of it. Hope you'll be out here with us tomorrow night. Miguel Batista and Hideo Nomo bubble watch night for the kids 14 and under and then Wednesday night Rick Helling and Odalis Perez. Jesse Orozco in his 45th game and he'll be pitching to Damian Miller Kurt Schilling and Tony Womack big sweeping breaking ball for a strike oh and one. Down in the Dodger bullpen Paul Quantrill is loosening up. So Schilling stuck to his guns, out talked his manager, and he's still in there. 0 oh 2. Damian Miller walked intentionally with a runner at second and two out in the second inning, grounded to short in the fifth. Miller, another veteran, he's 33. Just missed. One and two the count. There are only a few fellas who remain from the 35 picks in the expansion draft who are still in uniform with Arizona. Miller is one of them. He's gone. Miller, Brian Anderson, David DeLucci. So one away here in the seventh inning. And Kurt Schilling was on deck, but he has gotten a hook. And Jay Bell coming off to pick up for him. So Jay Bell, who has not Your played very please. much, and going up against a Roscoe, he's just one for two. Jay Bell. Bell on the DL for a lengthy time and has had trouble now finding a spot in which to play. Ball one. So Schilling was a little different tonight in the fact that he walked three, struck out seven. The fellow who really bothered him was the number eight hitter in the Dodger lineup, and I guess that has to be a surprise. Cora singled in the second, hit a two run home run. 
in the fourth and singled in the sixth. You can bet that'll be studied for the next time the Dodgers see Schilling. Two and oh. Breaking ball, two and one. Jay Bell missed the first 96 games of the year with separate injuries to each calf muscle. So he's really trying to catch up. Hitting only 182. Three and one to count to Jay. On deck, Tony Womack. To repeat, David Bell hit a home run in the ninth inning, and the Giants beat Colorado four to three. Fastball hit down to Cora. So Jay Bell grounding out for Kurt Schilling. Shortstop. And the batter now will be Tony Womack. Schilling making his notes to himself while his memory is fresh. He'll have a videotape of the game to check what he did right and what he did wrong. That'll go on his CD ROM. And the next time he faces the Dodgers, the computer will light up and he'll see every single pitch he made tonight. What it was, where it was, and what happened to it. Tony Womack flied to left, grounded out twice. The last time in the fifth inning, he dribbled a ball up along third. Adrian Beltre made one of those great throws of his. Little high. Tony Womack hitting 269. Womack started to hit. The ball club started to play well right after the All Star break. Remember, July the 11th, the Dodgers were leading Arizona by two and a half games. And here we are, late in August. A ten and a half game swing with Arizona leading the Dodgers by eight. Right. Of course, having lived through the 1951 season, when the Giants were 13 and a half games behind the Brooklyn Dodgers in August and beat the Dodgers, believe me, anything can happen. Three and two. And if memory serves me right, the Dodgers played in 1951. They played a, a little bit better than 500 ball. And the Giants played better than 600 ball to catch up. And Womack strikes out. So Jesse Orozco faces three, strikes out two. And at the end of six and a half, Dodgers three, D backs two. Now for a sports update, let's go to the Fox Sports Net studio. Dodgers baseball on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Jack Daniels Country Cocktails. They're not coolers, they're Jack Daniels Country Cocktails. A busted bat, the third of the night, and a foul ball. And boy, Marquise Grissom Wood really took off, sailing over the Dodger dugout and way back into the stands. So the man of the moment. Marquise Grissom, who made that remarkable throw to nail Matt Williams at the plate. And a huge sliver of bat went over into that happy group back of the Dodger dugout. There it is. It has been retrieved. It is absolutely useless. Except maybe if you hold it by the, the thick end, you can pick up leaves in the park. All right, Grissom with a new piece of wood. Oh, and one to count. Mike Coplo on the mound. Coplo four and one, a solid ERA of two, and that's fouled away. Oh, and two. Coplo has a birthday coming up at the end of the month. He will be 26 years old. So Kurt Schilling 
who gave it his best shot and that was typical Quilling in the sixth inning when Schilling had run as at second and third and struck out Hansen and got Roberts after apparently talking his way into staying in when Bob Brownlee went out to perhaps hook him. And in seeing the trainer work on the right hand you're wondering if he had a blister or another problem. He was never on the base pads. But he might have hurt his right hand and still bit the bullet. So one out and now Sean Green. Green walk. Hit back hard to Schilling and struck out again Schilling. By the way when the Diamondbacks come up in the eighth inning they'll have the big boys McCracken Spivey and Gonzalez and if anybody gets on Colburn. So Paul Quantrell throwing in the pen getting ready. Two balls and no strikes to Sean Green. Strike. Two and one. Two and one to count to Green. And foul back. Poplov came up briefly at the end of last year. He was in nine games from Philadelphia and still lives back there. And got his feet wet in a very tough pennant race at the end of September last year. Ball three. Mike attended Northwestern University, then transferred to the University of Delaware, the Delaware Blue Hens, and was drafted in the 29th round by Arizona. Hold up, and he walks. So green aboard Laduca coming up and a reminder the Dodger Coca Cola family pack. Don't forget the family pack four reserve level tickets four Dodger dogs four coats and a parking pass for thirty nine dollars and the family pack available at every Sunday and Wednesday home game all season long. For more information call three two three two two four one hit today. Well we got a fleeting glimpse of one of the loveliest women we have ever known in our lifetime. Terry O'Malley Seidler was the lady there she is with two of her grandchildren. Mm. What a scene. That's right. Laduca scoring fly ball grounded to third flied to center. On deck Adrian Beltre. And a ground ball foul down along third to Matt Williams. 0 and 2. McCracken, Spivey, and Gonzalez. Paul LaDuca going back to get his weapon. And just to look ahead for a moment, McCracken is 3 for 5 against Quantrill. Spivey is 2 for 3. And Gonzalez five for twelve, so he's going to have his hands full when he comes in for the eighth inning. Comebacker, cop love to his shortstop, turns it to first. Laduca hits into the double play, and that's that. We have seven innings in the books, and the Dodgers leading three-two. And here comes Paul Quantro. Quentin McCracken. Duck in a couple of scores, one important. The Giants knock off Colorado four to three, a ninth inning home run by David Bell. Milwaukee beats the Cubs two to one. Though the Dodgers must win to keep their lead. And the wild card is really getting tougher by the minute. With the Giants and Houston cubbying up. And the Dodgers want to push it back to three and a half with a victory. And right now, Paul Quantrill. And he'll be backed up by Eric Gagne. Quantrill, as we told you, has had trouble with the three hitters he will face now. First, McCracken, three for five against him, and one for three in the game tonight. 
Ball one. On deck, you have Junior Spivey, and he's two for three against Quantra. Two and oh, the count. By the way, the Giants, by winning tonight, have now won six of their last eight games. And now Quantrill is behind three and oh. Well, you know, he knows these guys have given him a bad time. And perhaps with that in mind, he's fallen behind three and oh. McCracken single, fly to center, grounded out. Quinton one for three. Hitting 323. What a job he's done taking over right field. He's a switch hitter and he has done well from either side of the plate. A one hopper that eats up Cora, but he recovers the bounce and gets it. Alex Cora. Staying with the ball that was drilled. Second base, 37. Up in the air. Junior Spivey. Grab it and still throw him out. One out in the eighth. And the batter, Junior Spivey. So Cor is having a big night. Junior Spivey walked in the first inning, popped up, grounded out, 0 for 2. Ball one. On deck, Luis Gonzalez. Bouncer over the mound. Here comes Cora. Tough play on the run. Can't get anything on the throw. So Spivey, an infield single. It was virtually impossible to get any kind of a throw because he was on the dead run going the wrong way. Number 20. Luis he does well to get Gonzalez. to the ball, but now what? Kind of floated over. And Spivey runs far too well to be nailed on that. Now with Luis Gonzalez coming up, Jim Tracy says, I want to go to the pen. And down in the bullpen, getting ready. Mm-hmm. Thomas and bienvenue, Monsieur Gagne, who, by the way, as he walks in, Against Gonzalez, Gonzo is two for 12, and does his presence light up the ballpark? We'll be back. We have the time to remind you this copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Dodgers may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of the game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Dodgers. One out, one on, the Dodgers leading by one, and Luis Gonzalez facing Eric Gagne. Gonzalez two for 12 against Gagne in the past. Gonzo hitting 292 for the year. 25 home runs, 89 runs batted in. Spivey at first. Right. So Gagne immediately issuing the fact he was going after him. No finesse. 95 mile an hour fastball on the inside corner. Spivey's a good base runner, so they have to think about him. 0 oh and 2. Junior Spivey over at first base, representing the tying run, has stolen 10 out of 14. 0 oh and 2 to Gonzalez. Can you believe it? He has struck out 90 batters while walking 11. Yeah. Anybody had looked back at him after those three pitches. That was a 95 mile an hour express that left Gonzo on the platform. Whammo. 
So two down. And Greg Colburn will now give way to a left hand hitter. And what a hitter, Eurebio Durazo. Durazo hitting 278, 15 home runs, 44 runs batted in. How has Gagno fared with him? Durazo is 0 for 3. Ball one. Quick throw, and Spivey just did get back. Well, Laduca always thinking behind the plate, not only blocking the pitch and then getting into first base. Dodgers three, D backs two, Giants beat Colorado 4 3. And here's Big Durazo. Durazo missed six and a half weeks at the start of the season. One and one. He had hammy bone surgery in March, result of a swing in an exhibition game. But he is a very, very dangerous hitter. 150 at bats, 15 home runs. Durazo from Hermosilla in Mexico. Durazo, 27 years old, and he is big enough. He is 6'3 and 240. So he has handled with care all over him. And now this crowd on its feet. They are all out there with Gagne. One and two. Spivey, the tying run at first, held on by Karras. Now, Leduc is seeing Gagne kind of hesitate. Decides to go out and talk to him. He didn't like his body language, I'm sure. So Eric with the, the steaming glasses. And the spring training cap. One and two to Eurebio Durazo. Now back. Gagne called in to get two outs in the eighth, and then, of course, he will pitch the ninth. One and two. Got it. He comes in and strikes out Gonzalez, and Durazo gets a standing ovation from the crowd, and at the end of seven and a half, three two Dodgers. Dodger Baseball is brought to you by Jack in the Box, where we don't make it till you order it. By your Southern California BMW Center. By Southwest Airlines. And by Buick. It's all good. Adrian Beltre takes a strike on the count 0-1, bottom of the eighth inning. Dodgers three, Diamondbacks two. 0-2. Eric Gagne, just to show you what kind of a pitcher he has become, he came in in the eighth inning with a tying run aboard. He faced Gonzalez and Durazo. He threw eight pitches. Seven of the eight were strikes. And Beltre makes that a strike, going after a big sweeping curveball that was way out of the zone. One away. First baseman number 23. So Gagne with two strikeouts tonight. Here is Gonzalez on a fastball, frozen. And then here comes Gagne and a breaking dipper to get Durazo. So Gagne, as he sits in the dugout, has 91 strikeouts and 11 walks. He'll be pitching to Williams, Finley, and Miller in the ninth inning. 
That's a strike. A lot of movement on that. 0 and 1. Garris flied to right, walked and singled. Again, remember the Giants won. They defeated Colorado 4 to 3. Little bouncer, nice play by Koplov. Two down. Well, as you know, the pennant race is certainly heating up, and the Dodgers are offering the Penn and Chase package for the final games of the season. Select your prime location from the great seats available on the field, loge, and reserve levels, and guarantee those same seats for all postseason games played at Dodger Stadium in 2002. All packages offer discount prices as well as the opportunity to reserve the best available seats for next year. So for more information, Give us a call, 1 800 6 Dodger today. That's a strike to Grassolani. Mark single to center, fly to center, fly to left. His single, number 1200 in his career. Koplov, who came in to pitch the seventh inning, struck out Grissom, walked Green, got Laduca to hit into a double play. Now he strikes out Beltry and gets Karras, so he's doing very well. Oh, and two. So Coppola, maybe not as spectacular, but he strikes out three in two innings. And at the end of eight, it's time for Gagne to go back to work. Dodgers trying to finally beat Schilling, who had beaten them nine straight since 1997. Alex Cora had a lot to do with it, going three for three. And now the ball is in the hands of Eric Gagne, seeking a Cub record 45th save. And standing in his way, among others, Matt Williams. Matt Williams, a home run in the past against Gagne. Ball one. Williams, two for seven. And of the seven at bats, Gagne has struck him out three times. One and oh. Williams struck out in the second inning, walked in the fourth, walked and was credited with a stolen base when Karras threw to second, sailed. He had been picked off. And then Williams tried to score on a base hit by Finley, and Mark East Grissom threw him out. One and two. That was a big three. Grissom charging the base hit, and on the fly, hit Laduca, who pinned Matty, and the Dodgers still lead 3 2. Without that throw, the game is tied. Fair play because Williams took an extra base hit away from Grissom in the first inning. Two and two. Ooing and awing on every pitch. That was a 96 mile an hour fastball. Two balls and two strikes to Matt Williams. On deck, Steve Finley. Got him. And Matt Williams looks out at Gagne as he walks away, just as Gonzalez did. That's three consecutive strikeouts for Eric Gagne. There you go. And Williams walks away. A lot of cheering for the crowd. They're into this game for sure. And the batter now, Steve Finley. Finley, two for 13. But one of them a home run, and that's foul. But to just remind you, he can do that. Boy, what a quick bat. Oh and one to Steve batting 278. One and one. Gagne intimidating with all of his pitches. He has only hit two. In fact if anything I believe it's a comfort for the opposing hitters to know that Gagne's control has been so good. 
But anybody who throws as hard as he does, 95, 96, you always think he he might let one fly. And now he's behind three and one. On deck, Damian Miller. And they probably go to the bench for David DeLucci, and there he is. Three and two. Little slider, Finley out in front of it. Of course, when you know a guy throws 96, you have to be looking fastball. Mark Grace is on the steps. Little dribbler up along first, foul ball. So Finley back to hit, lined out to second, grounded out to second, and then had that base hit to left field when Williams was thrown out of the plate. Dodgers scored one in the first. Roberts tripled and came home on a fly ball by LaDuca. Alex Cora hit a home run with Karras aboard, and the Dodgers led 3-0. But Colburn hit a home run with Gonzalez aboard in the sixth inning. That made it 3-2 Dodgers. Grissom threw Williams out at the plate to keep it 3-2. And now here's Gagne, who came in to get two outs in the eighth, one out here in the ninth. He has struck out three in a row. Three and two to Steve Finley. And that's going to be a base hit. Little flare into right field. And Finley will take it. The time runs aboard. And now David DeLucci is not going to come up. It'll be Mark Grace, and DeLucci will hit back on him. So Steve Finley hit one off the end of the bat, looping single. And now Mark Grace coming up to bat for Damian Miller. Mark Grace going head to head with Gagne is one for four. Hitting 250. The veteran for the year is hitting 240 with six home runs. Mark Grace. The so Hideo Nomo and Odalis Perez, who will be out there on the firing line, Nomo tomorrow night and Perez Wednesday night, sweating it out. So here is Grace. Mark started on Saturday, 0 and 1. That was only his third start in the last 20 games. Oh and one to Mark. Bow back. We were mentioning before that this is a veteran ball club that takes the field for the Arizona Diamondbacks. And I guess really not many more veteran than Mark Grace who is 38 years old. Randy Johnson eyeballing the action. Oh and two the count. Johnson reminds you a little bit of Nolan Ryan in his late 30s. All he did was strike out 16 yesterday against the Cubs and hit 102 on one of the last pitches he made in the game. Does Finley run? Yes, he has stolen 14 out of 18. Oh and two the count to Mark Grace. Dodgers shade him to left field. In the dirt, nice save by Laduca. One and two the count. So they're not expecting Grace to pull. Robert shades him to left center. Grissom dead straight away in left. And Sean Green way off the line, heading towards right center. Location is everything at this stage. One out in the ninth. And got him. He has faced five batters, and Gagne has struck out four of them. And the batter will be David DeLucci. The attention, please, to the backs. 
Now batting for Kutlov. Number 25, David DeLucci. The David DeLucci. One of the original D backs coming up. He had made seven straight consecutive starts when Gonzalez was out with a sore side. He's had a low back strain himself. Nice juggling block, and Finley started to go to second, and he could have made it. And time, as Laduca very slowly getting up. Had Finley not committed and turned his back. He could have gone to second base on that. Now he's starting. Now he turned his back. And he barely did get back to first base. So the tying run is still at first. 3 2 Dodgers, two out in the ninth. Laduca keeping it open. One and one to David DeLucci. And again now this crowd so inspired by Gagne air up and at him. Babes in arms are up and at him. The boy from Baton Rouge David DeLucci ball two two and one. David an 11th round draft pick. As a junior at the University of Mississippi. Boy, he was a big man on campus there. Two and one. Ball three. And on deck is the pest, Tony Womack. Womack with that short stroke of his, probably be the last guy the Dodgers would like to see. Three and one to count to David DeLucci. Two out in the ninth. Tying run at first and hope you'll be with us tomorrow night. Three and two. And now this crowd, I mean, they can't get higher than they are this moment. the runner there goes the ball into left center field that's not only going to be a base hit here comes Finley to score and beat the throw and it's 3 3 in the ninth inning David DeLucci a three and two pitch hits it in the gap in left center with two out Finley going scores and we're 3 3. It was a fastball, and Delushi got the bat on it, and Roberts couldn't get the glove on it. So we had mentioned earlier one of the great strengths of this Arizona ball club is the bench. And if it isn't somebody like Delucci, it might be DeRazzo, it could be Council when he was healthy, you name it. They just seem to be able to wheel up a good player at the right spot. And that's just one of the many reasons why they've won 83 games. The David DeLucci, a double to tie it up. Now Tony Womack, and he's the reason for the meeting. So Finley hit that looping fly ball single to right. Just like Luis Gonzalez got a pop fly single in the sixth inning, and Colburn followed with the home run. So the little dingers lead up to the big zingers, and it's 3-3 in the ninth inning. Tony Womack is 0 for 4. Gagne has now made 30 pitches. When the Dodgers come up in the bottom of the ninth, they will have Cora to lead it off. Then Gagne spot and Roberts. But here is Walmack with that short stroke. 0 and 1. Not all the air has gotten out of the balloon, but the, the balloon has sure softened on that base hit. One and one. Down in the bullpen, Guillermo Mota beginning to loosen up. 
Just brought up from Triple A, Kevin Burns sent down. One and one. And that's going to be a flare to center. Roberts makes the catch. The Gagne gets him out, but not before Delushi gets together with Finley to tie it up. And we're heading for the bottom of the ninth. Kurt Schilling has nine consecutive wins against Los Angeles, looking for his 22nd of the year. So far, bat, off to a bad start. Dave Roberts over the head of Quentin McCracken. Roberts running hard all the way, hustling into third base with a leadoff triple. Roberts would score on a sacrifice fly. Later in the inning, Sean Green, a three-run count. Ball four. His 21st walk of the season for Schilling. He has 21 wins. Marquise Grissom in the second gets the gas face, one of his five strikeouts on the night for Grissom. That wasn't good. This was Alex Cora. Get off me, ball! His third home run of the year, a two-run shot. Surprising that he'd do it. But he turned on the fastball that, as you see, was only 92. Not Schilling's best stuff, perhaps. Top six, same score. Greg Colburn up, facing Omar Dahl, and he stings it into the nighttime air in Los Angeles. Makes the bleachers. Colburn has eight home runs this year. Half of them have come in August, 3-2. Later in the inning, Steve Finley up. Shoots a single into left. I told you, Grissom Cade five times while he was pitching in in the outfield. Comes up with it cleanly, on to home. And Williams is gunned out at the plate, still 3-2. Boys in blue. Eric Gagne on for a five-out save, and he strikes out Luis Gonzalez with a 98-mile-an-hour cheese. Then he flips the script, pulls the string on Rubio Durazo, and the eighth. In the ninth, Matt Williams strikes out on a full-count pitch. Then he, after a single to Steve Finley, Grace Kays, all four of the outs, strikeouts. And then David DeLucci, he slices one into the gap. Finley's got the green light from the word go. He's going to try to tie this game up at three. He does just that a blown save for Gagne. That's a rarity I'll tell you about in a minute. Bottom nine, Alex Cora on first trying to make something happen. Heads for second. Tony Womack, 0 for 7 night at the plate. His knee hurt worse than that. But this is a serious, serious issue. You see Womack go down. He would eventually get up. Alex Cora, who takes a knee directly to the head, laid down on the field motionless for about 10 minutes. Team trainer, the coaches come out, fans praying, hoping that Alex is all right. You rarely see this ever in a baseball game, a stretcher coming onto the field. You see Roberts, his concerns, neck brace on Cora, taken off, and then the good news comes over the jumbotron, as you can see, a concussion, but Cora has movement in his hands and in his feet. Back to the more mundane, the baseball game at hand. Matt Williams gets his first knock of the game. Junior Spivey comes in, and he gives the Diamondbacks the lead, and the Diamondbacks go on to grab the victory. Arizona improves to eight and three in extra inning games. Eric Gagne blows his first save in 23 chances at Dodger Stadium. As for Kurt Schilling, season high three walks. The D-backs 10-0 and Schilling start against the NL West this year.